JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 11th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US uh, dollar traded lower against uh, the other uh, major against its uh, major peers on Thursday and during the Asian session Friday. It lost the most ground versus GBP, UDCHF and CAD in that order. The weakening of the US dollar combined with the strengthening of the risk linked Aussie and Looney suggests that markets traded in a risk on uh, fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, the fact that the Swiss franc was also among the main gainers points otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, all but one of the major EU indices closed in the red, with the only exception being the UK's FTSE 100, which gained 0.10%. Nonetheless, Wall Street edged north, with the S&P 500 hitting a fresh record high. Appetite remained upbeat during the Asian session today as well. The only exception was uh, China Shanghai Composite. Now, yesterday the US CPI data revealed that uh, both the headline and core rates jumped by more than anticipated. Specifically, the headline rate hit 5% year over year from 4.2% and the core uh, rate rose to 3.8% from uh, 3%. The forecasts were for the rates to increase to 4.7% and 3.4% uh, respectively. Although this could have added to speculation uh, that the Fed may start to withdraw monetary policy support sooner than previously thought, looking at the details of the report, market participants saw that there were hefty contributions uh, to that from short-term increases in airline ticket prices and used cars, which supports the fact that the latest deflation spike may indeed be due to transitory factors. That may be the reason why stock markets rebounded in the aftermath of uh, the report. However, with underlying inflation also climbing further above the Fed's target of 2% and also taking into account that several committee members expressed uh, the desire to start discussing quantitative easing tapering at the upcoming meetings, we still see this with a degree of cautiousness. Before we get confident where financial markets may be headed next, we prefer to wait for the outcome of, the, of uh, next week's FOMC gathering. Even though there is decent level of expectations over some tapering talk, a lot may depend on the potential indicative pace. A fast pace of monetary policy withdrawal may suggest uh, that uh, Fed officials do not see the surge in inflation as transitory as they did, as they did in the past, and that may hurt, uh, this may hurt equities. At the same time, the US dollar and other safe havens could come under some buying interest. On the other hand, any discussion suggesting that uh, the time of uh, scaling back monetary policy has not come yet, or anything pointing to a very slow pace of tightening, uh, may encourage market participants to increase their risk exposure a bit more. Obviously, upcoming inflation data may also play a big role on how the Fed uh, will continue moving forward. Now, apart from the US CPIs, we also had an ECB monetary policy decision yesterday. The bank decided to keep all its monetary policy settings unchanged, noting that its pandemic emergency purchase program will continue to run at a significant higher pace. The bank raised its uh, 2021 and 2022 GDP and inflation forecasts, but at the press conference following the decision, ECB President Lagarde clarified that headline inflation remains below target over the forecast horizon. 
she admitted that there were somewhat uh, that members were somewhat uh, more optimistic uh, about the economic uh, outlook than three months ago but highlighted that the decision statement was unanimously supported suggesting that tapering is not on any official's mind at the moment having said uh, all that though the euro did not fail on the ecb's uh, dovish stance Perhaps as this was the outcome the majority of uh, market participants may have been expecting. Now as uh, for today's events, during the early European morning we already got the UK monthly GDP for April as well as the industrial and manufacturing production rates uh, for the same month. GDP accelerated to 2.3% month over month from 2.1% but uh, the industrial and manufacturing production rates missed their forecasts. In any case, the pound uh, barely reacted on uh, the release. Later in the day, the only other data point worth mentioning is the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for June, which is expected to have inched up 20 to 84 from 82.9. We also have a speaker on today's agenda, and this is uh, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next uh, week. JFT, just fair and direct.